Welcome back to Live Now from Fox Time. Gene Francine. Continuing the conversation now, the Israel Hamas war and those Houthi rebel strikes, we know a ship attacked by Yemen Houthi rebels has sunk in the Red Sea after days of taking on water. Officials saying it's the first vessel to be fully destroyed as part of their campaign over Israel's war against Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Well, joining us live this morning to further break all of this down is senior lecturer in criminal justice and homeland security at the University of New Haven, Mr. Ken Gray, good morning to you. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning, Janae. Glad to be with you again. So a lot to break down and hearing that this ship sank. Uh, break down the events that led to this, please. So last week, the Houthis struck the uh, the Ruby Mar, which is a uh, British flagged uh, uh, merchant vessel. And uh, the, the crew ended up having to abandon the ship and the ship has been taken on water uh, throughout the week, and now it has finally gone ahead and sunk. So the Houthis finally have, after all this uh, launching of missiles and use of drones, they finally have one ship that they can claim that they actually sunk with all their efforts. But so far, it's only one. And with you saying that, I mean, they finally can say they've sunk one ship. Do you think this is going to lead to them trying to see if they can sink another one? I think that they will continue their operations, uh, harassing commercial shipping in the Red Sea, um, as long as they have weapon systems to do so. Now, that brings up an interesting point, is that the United States and the UK and other countries have been trying to stop the Houthis from making these attacks by removing their capabilities, by striking their missile launch sites, by striking their storage sites, by striking their UAV sites, uh, by trying to keep them from being able to launch another attack. So far to date, that has not proved to be very efficient. And so there has actually been some talk about possibly putting boots on the ground, having ground forces go in there. Now, the United States talked, uh, has apparently talked to the Saudis. The Saudis had been at war with the Houthis and share a border with them. And the Saudis seem uh, not interested in uh, renewing their active war with the Houthis. So I think that if they want to put boots on the ground, they'll have to go to some other force to do so or consider putting boots, uh, American boots or UK boots on the ground. And I don't think that's going to happen. As we discuss this, Mr. Ken, I've seen people say, what is it with these Houthi rebels and these ships? Is it something on the ships that they want? Are they concerned about commercial shipping and wanting to take those um, imports or exports? Or is it just bragging rights in the region as we have all of these different terrorist organizations trying to control this region amid the Israel-Hamas war? So the Houthis are part of that axis of resistance that uh, that uh, Iran has been uh, running against uh, Israel. Uh, the Houthis are too far away from Gaza Strip to actually go there themselves. And so the, the way that they are uh, trying to make their efforts felt in uh, supporting uh, Hamas is by striking commercial ships, by denying the rest of the world from using the Red Sea to get through the Suez Canal for commercial shipping. And so uh, this is their way in taking part in this war against Israel by, uh, by controlling the entrance to the southern entrance to the Red Sea. And with all of these different fights going on, I know sometimes it can get confusing, but a lot of these different fights um, are part of a big fight as far as control in the Middle East. I want to ask you, as these um, different fights continue, does it make it harder for a ceasefire to happen amid the Israel-Hamas war? So the, uh, peace, right now there is uh, negotiations going on. Uh, apparently Hamas negotiators have arrived in Cairo to continue these talks. Um, uh, you may recall that last week, uh, President Biden had announced that he thought that they were so close to uh, coming to terms that he expected for the, this to be implemented tomorrow. Well, that's not going to happen tomorrow. However, they are very close. Uh, one of the keys to the negotiations is that they want to try ha to have it in place by the beginning of Ramadan, which is March 10th. And so we have uh, a week before uh, the, the, these negotiations will have to be solidified 
and the ceasefire to to start. Uh, it, some of the terms, uh, so the uh, Hamas would have to release uh, a large number of the hostages they are holding. Uh, originally, they were talking about releasing all of them. Now that list has been reduced down to the elderly, the sick, uh, and women. Um, and uh, the uh, the number of uh, Palestinians that are being held by the Israelis, that number has come down. They have not given a number as to uh, the, uh, the exchange rate. It's not as if this is an actual exchange, but they're demanding that Israel release some Palestinians that are being held. Uh, they're talking about uh, uh, aid, uh, the, uh, the continuation of aid, but the main thing here is a ceasefire. And we're talking about a six week long ceasefire. That was six weeks when they were negotiating before, when there was still two weeks before Ramadan. Uh, that length of the ceasefire may end up being just the length of Ramadan, which is a month. Well, Mr. King, you know, I always appreciate your expertise and dialogue on these international topics. Is there anything else you'd like to add? So I think that, uh, you know, the, the northern border of Israel continues to be uh, a hotbed of uh, exchanges with Hezbollah. So we should keep our eyes on that as that... Uh, uh, Israel has a lot of forces. Some of those they've stood down. Uh, the IDF uh, members that were called up for this fight in Gaza Strip, some have been stood down. They may very well find that they have to turn them north to go into Lebanon to deal with Hezbollah if this continues on at the rate that it's going. Thank you so much. I know we're going to be keeping a close eye on that. As always, we appreciate you, Mr. King, coming on live now from Fox. You enjoy the rest of your day. Same to you. Thank you.